Hello, and welcome to the KDE Showdown. Oh, goodness. So, I was looking recently at uh, the Fedora News RSS feeds, and I saw that there was a new Fedora spin called Fedora Kinoite. And it's really neat. Essentially, it's silver blue, uh, Fedora Silver Blue, but with KDE. And I had uh, found myself uh, wishing when I had Silver Blue that I could put the KDE desktop on there. The problem is you don't want to um, you don't want to layer packages on. So, and actually, let me back up a second because you may be wondering, what do you mean layer packages on? So, hmm. eh, I'll leave it disabled, it's fine. So, um, Fedora Silver Blue is the new direction that uh, Fedora would like to go. Uh, and perhaps, um, perhaps, Perhaps this is a direction Red Hat would like to go in the future. But essentially, Fedora Silver Blue turns Fedora into something more like the way your cell phone works. You end up with the base OS being an, an image that is exactly the same for everybody. Fedora puts out the image, and everyone has the same thing. From an engineering and quality assurance point of view, this makes things a lot simpler for Fedora because everyone's got the exact same system. And so your user land um, products are essentially using Flatpak. So Flatpak and Snap, they're both kind of um, a solution to uh, worrying about specific um program formats for each operating system, right? So Debian and all of its descendants like Ubuntu have .deb. Um, Red Hat and um, OpenSUSE and all of their descendants use RPM. And so a lot of times I would look for some package and it turns out there is only a .deb because Ubuntu is one of the most popular Linux um, distros. You know, it's what got a lot of people into Linux uh, some 10 or 15 years ago. And so I would find myself SOL. Well, with either Flatpak or Snap, the person, uh, the project who creates one, they just create one and it works on every single Linux operating system. And it also has some security benefits, but that's not important when you're talking about Silver Blue or Kinoite. And so all your user land stuff is in a flat pack. If you want to do programming or um, install command line things, you use this program called Toolbox. Essentially, it's a container. Um, in Fedora land, we use Podman, which is almost exactly the same as Docker. It just doesn't have a daemon that needs to run. And so when you, when you, um, use this, it's it's all contained, it's not inside the system, again, keeping the system pure. So this, again, allows for a man, more maintainable system and should allow for easier debugging, right? Um, additionally, the way that they've set up things with the technology behind this, which is called RPM OS tree, um, if you do a system update and something's broken, you can roll back, which is pretty nice. Up until now, in order to do something like that, you either needed to have ZFS or ButterFS and set it up in a way that would allow you to roll things back. And that would probably work well enough, although not necessarily perfectly. So there's only one kind of bummer with uh, Kinoite, which is uh, why they chose the name, right? So in a typical uh, programmer sense of humor. Um, so first of all, starts with K, it's KDE, fine. 
Um, but also, it's a blue mineral, and it's based on the same tech as silver blue. Okay, fine. But um, the problem is, it makes it really hard to Google. Uh, I guess, same thing if you do Fedora and not Fedora Linux, you get a bunch of hat websites. So I got a whole bunch of mineral websites until I put uh, either Kinuite Linux or Fedora Kinuite. It also means tree in Japanese for uh, RPM OS tree, so it all works well, and that's why I'm pronouncing it that way. Maybe the minerals actually pronounce Kinoite or something. So, uh, so let's let's continue with our story here. So, uh, mo about two or three years ago, when I reinstalled the HTPC in the living room, I put Fedora Silver Blue on there. I wanted to make sure that anytime I update. I wasn't going to break the system. I could always roll it back and the family would be fine because this is how they watch TV and movies and play games. So I want that system to always work. So we went with Silver Blue. Unfortunately, at the time, there was no KDE. Uh, so it's a GNOME desktop. It's okay, but my family is more partial to uh, KDE, myself included. So I was really excited to see that someone's created this. I believe the same person may have created one with all the different desktops like um, XFCE and so on, but he just did that as a proof of concept, or she. Um, it's not an official thing. This one seems slightly more official, especially uh, given the website that it has and given the way it was announced on the Fedora um, RSS feeds. So... I wanted to take a look and, and see, because it's using RPM OS tree, what's layered on, what's a flat pack, how does it work? And then, the reason this is the KDE showdown is, as I was looking at that, it turns out that it's, you know, let's say, give or take, sometime in this week, it's KDE's 25th anniversary. And so, I wanted to take a look, I decided to go ahead and take a look at um, KDE Neon, which is a distro that's based on Ubuntu LTS, their long-term support. And it always has the latest KDE slash Plasma packages. And I want to take a look at Kubuntu, which is Ubuntu's um, way of making a KDE desktop. Although I believe for the past few years, it's not technically an Ubuntu project. I think it is... Uh, Blue Systems or someone else that has permission from Ubuntu to use the trademarks to do that. And so I'm installing this into a um, KVM uh, VM. I'm going to pause the video now um, so you guys don't have to watch the installation. And we'll come back once it's up and running. I just wanted to um, pop back for a second and show here that it says installing flat pack applications. So it looks like probably everything other than the desktop itself is going to be a flat pack application. We'll see. All right, we're back and it's time to reboot now that it's done installing. Good old Fedora logo. Interesting. It did say this is beta software, so maybe that'll be fixed. Got this crazy looking X here. I wonder if in these systems there isn't... Oh, here we go. All right, so let's finish our configuration. <laughs> Maybe that's a holdover from GNOME. Maybe GNOME has more stuff. All right, so here we're in our login. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to the remote viewer. That tends to work a little better. All right, and I'll fix the resolution once we get in. Oh, it's going to be Wayland. Interesting. When I was last playing around with Wayland when I first got to Fedora 34, it was a bit sketchy. Whoa, that is, that background is a choice. All right, 
Let's see here. Yeah, I'm not. I think that's the new Fedora logo. All right. Let's see. No, this is not actually what I want. I know the better than this because I am a user of KDE. I should know better than to try and go there. What I want to go is here. But God, that is a god awful thing. All right, let's go to the dark theme. The dark side. All right. And now, <clears throat> where are my displays? And this this place sucks. Let's go to this one. Apply. Much better. All right. So we got an announcement. You know what? I'm gonna. I, I, I can't with this background. <laughs> I just can't. Um. This is. I hope this is not going to be the background for Fedora 35. That's a garbage background. That's much better. All right, that is much better. So I saw we had a notification here for updates. Let's see what this looks like on this system. Well, it, all right, there we go. I was like, what is happening? Interesting that it brings up Discover. Why can't I? There we go. Rather than, like, so normally in Fedora... Uh, let me see. Let me see if I can switch screens and show you what it normally looks like. Let's see. Is this the right one? Yeah. So normally, it looks like... Where did it go? Mother effer. Right when I need it. All right. It usually looks like something like this. Uh, let's see. Check updates. I'm going to pause for a second. You don't have to watch all this. All right. So normally, it looks a little something like this. So it shows you all the things you can update. And instead, we've just got one update for the whole platform. If I click more information. So let's see. This is the runtime for the flat pack. Um, this is funny. Um, all right. So if you look here, uh, oops. So now let's go back here. There we go. And this is what I was saying was funny. More information. So it's funny. This is these weird um, reviews here. All right. So if you look over here, we are at oops, we're at 35 um, beta 1.2 commit. All right. So let's see what happens after we update this. Um, it should probably prompt me to reinstall, uh, reboot because uh, we should be, we should now uh, have a new base system underneath. Unless this is literally when it says the flat pack thing, it, well, I have a feeling it's, we're going to have another deployment underneath this, which is the way, like I was saying before, this is the way that RPM OS tree works that you've got a bunch of, you know, um, layers on there. And everyone's got the same thing. And then on top of that, you put your packages. Uh, while we're waiting for that, let's take a look at what we've got here. So we've got Firefox. And, ooh, I let this um, transparency is kind of neat. Um, perhaps taxing my uh, my system slight, ever so slightly because it is, um, it is a VM. But that's pretty cool. All right, so let's see. So we've got Firefox for internet. So not a lot of things installed by default. Um, I would say, I think this is probably fine for, um, this is probably fine for something right now that is based on Silverblue because um, if anyone's using an RPM OS tree uh, system, it's because they know what they're doing. Nobody's accidentally installing this. It's not really selectable off of the main Fedora page or anything. It's completely safe. Uh, there are a lot of people that have written pieces that I agree with about why default choices for um, your packages matters. And I believe in those. And so I think if this is the way they want to go going forward. And that's what Fedora has been saying, that they're going to want to have a better set of defaults. 
So it looks like that's done. It didn't prompt me to reboot. I don't know if that's because this is different than GNOME or if that was not something that needed a reboot, but let's reboot and see what happens in terms of the layering of the packages. I'm going to pause while we reboot. All right, so we're back and it didn't layer anything on top. So I'm going to assume that that was literally something with Flatpak that didn't need to be layered. So um, let's take a look at um, what they've got available and see if there's if it's the usual things or if there's some dearth of packages because oh, we've got oh, that's a featured thing. So I've never really used discover. I don't remember it being this bare, but uh, usually I don't install things this way. Mostly I've seen it in GNOME. So if we look at applications here. Okay, we've got these um, various categories. Let's see. Definitely got a lot of games. All right, so we've got dark table and events. I have GNOME. Uh, no Krita? That's interesting. Uh, do I need to do any of these things here? Interesting. All right, if we go to Office, we've got LibreOffice we could install. Evolution. Not uh, Caligra, which is KDE's um, Office suite. Uh, and no, interestingly, if we go to internet, do we have contact? So we don't even have KDE PIM, which is interesting. I'm not sure if that's because they don't have. Let's see. Still are now. Interesting. All right, let's go to settings and see if there's what we've got. So we've got the Fedora uh, Flatpak registry. And then we've got firmware updates. That's it, huh? All right. So let's go back here. All right, we can add. Oh, we can add FlatHub. There we go. Let's add FlatHub. That's the biggest source of flat packs on the internet, I think. There may be some bigger one. I don't know, but um, that could make a difference. Okay, and then here's like if they're on top or on bottom. Okay, so let's go back to applications. All right, now things are looking a bit better, I believe. All right, let's go to internet. All right, we've got a lot more things here now. We've got this Hakuneku thing, we've got Element. So, Google Chrome. So I, I would think that they probably, when this is no longer beta, they probably want to just have Flat Hub, ena Flat Hub enabled uh, by default, unless there's a reason not to. Um, Cute browser is really cool. Geary. Hunt <laughs> Monero stuff. So what I'm not seeing though is contact. So I don't know if they just don't have, if that stuff is just not available as a flat pack yet. Um, I believe early on KDE was going more the um, the snap direction, the Ubuntu direction, which makes sense since uh, KDE Neon is based on Ubuntu. But all right, instead of Uh, what the heck is this? Instead, <laughs> instead of just scrolling, let's do a search. Let's see. Contact? No contact. Do they have Kmail? No. Uh, what else do I use? All right. I know that K. Um, Kid in Live is here, right? Oops. No, that is odd because I know I've got the flat pack of Kitten Live. Uh, oh, maybe I need to find like a KDE repo. Let's see if there's a KDE specific repo for um, flat packs. Because maybe maybe I got that flat pack from um, uh, from straight from Kitten Live. So let's see, KDE flat pack. Let's see what happens. 
All right, let's see what we have here. Should have a flat hub. Distribute.kd. This may be perhaps where I've got it. All right, let's take a look at, let's go to flat hub directly. Okay, and let's do a search for Gaten Live, and it's there. Okay, so why is it not here? I did add flat hub, didn't I? Maybe there's something about the way that they have it configured on here, or maybe there I need to somehow get this thing to re um, re pull from the flat hub and see what's there. Hmm. Dl.flathub.org. It's probably the right thing, but let's see. doesn't really help us. All right. Uh, maybe stat stats may clue us into whether Oh, that's not good. Interesting. All right. Let me see if there's a way I can refresh the flat hub directory. All right. So it turned out the solution was just to get out and back into discover and then it was there so now i go to caden live and there she is or he is uh weird to describe any kind of gender to a program but okay let's see what about contact is contact there all right cool all right so that changes things dramatically so it does mean that we can uh use uh kinoite um, to be productive in kde it just it simply requires first adding uh, flat hub in order to grab all the programs you might want. Um, so I use Kitten Live all the time. Um, we also use Krita. You know, Krita is a bit heavy, but, you know, and I say that only because I didn't enable the um, hardware acceleration on the uh, graphics card for the VM. So we'll see. This may push things a bit. Um, it seems to be using a lot of its VM uh, CPU. Uh, memory usage is pretty low, though, as well as it's not using too much from the host, which is good. And, and allows us to demonstrate what it looks like when we're installing stuff. Um, that said, I don't think we necessarily have to sit here and watch it. So I'm going to pause till it gets a little closer to 100%. All right, so I finished off while I was looking somewhere else. So now it's there. So if we come over here, it should be in the menus under graphics. There we go, Krita. Unfortunately, no icon there. Hopefully that eventually shows up. Let's see. Maybe it comes after I've launched it. Maybe, maybe. Oh, that's a real bummer. Hopefully that's another thing they can fix going forward. Because, you know, we have uh, associations with our icons, right? They help us find what we're looking for. And I don't think we should make it hard for users. Da, da, da. All right, cool. Again, never mind how jumpy it is. That's more of a artifact of the fact that I'm running it in a VM than anything else. Um, let me just go back into that for one second. The, the UI seemed a little strange. Let me take another look there. <laughs> no, I guess it's it's fine. I, it looks like it's got. Let's see if I go to save a file. Yep, it's it's got the um, KDE. I mean, it's got this weird thing here, which I think is because of Wayland, but uh, it's definitely got the right KDE feel to it. Let's see, let's close this guy out. 
And see, it was the yes, no there that seems a bit odd to me. That doesn't seem very kitty like, but maybe it's, I'm just not thinking about this in the right way. Hmm. Uh, I think I've, all right, there we go. That's pretty good for 32 more actions. Wow. Uh, <laughs> let's expand yep. Make that a little bigger. there we go a little strangeness there with the, the boundaries but not too bad okay all right things are looking looking pretty good and <laughs> well you know that's okay so Let's see. I wonder if there if there's a way to force it to check if there's an update or anything. Uh, what is this? Oh, an add-on for Firefox. Sure, why not? All right. Let's see if there's a way that we can force it to check if there's an update uh, to the image. So yeah, I, I I forced it to check, and it says there is one. Um, the documentation says it should do this automatically. Um, I'm guessing there's a few different possibilities happening here. Um, I have had different systems, um, whether it's Ubuntu or Fedora, where sometimes it won't check on its own whether there's an update. You have to do it manually. Um, could be that I'm running this in a VM, and so it's going a little bit slower than usual, and it would have got around to it, or maybe it waits 24 hours to check or something. But let's, let's um, go ahead and do the upgrade. Wonder how long this is supposed to go. It's not really giving me anything I can really work with other than that it's only at 15% at the moment, perhaps. Um, I'll go ahead and pause until it gets closer. All right, now that it's finished, um, it tells us what it upgraded and a bunch of stuff. It tells us what it removed and what it added. And then the way these systems work, just like your cell phone, you reboot and then you're into the new system. So let's go ahead and do what this says here. Here it shows our version. What are you doing? All right. And then we'll log back in. If we look, where was it? Status, there we go. All right, so here's our two deployments. This was our original, and then look at this one. So if you look here, this looks a lot more official than this one. Um, the um, Grub menu looked a lot more official, and the fact that they removed GNOME tells me that they're getting a lot closer to a true release for Kinoite. So um, that's really cool. That works really well. Get out of there. That full screen thing that was from that's from uh, KV, uh, remote viewer that's not from the system. All right, so we've got a new thing going on here. Hey, look at that! Krita has got an icon now. Not sure if that's a result of rebooting or a result of the update that brought in better packages or something. <coughs> uh, we'll go ahead and quit. And let's just see if there's any better wallpapers. No, no. All right, usually I'm pretty happy with the, the wallpapers, but not so much for that one. All right, so that's kind of an overview of Fedora Kinoite. Uh, we learned about 
how it's an RPM OS tree um, version of Fedora, what that means, how it works. And I would say that it is an okay uh, version of KDE with Fedora. I do think, again, for now, it's okay that they don't have too much in here because this is the only people that are going to go to this are the most hardcore of our Fedora users. Um, but I do think if Fedora continues in the direction of having Silver Blue and Kinoita be their official ways that they want you to use Fedora instead of the traditional one where everything is an RPM package, they're going to re really need to work on the defaults and get that sorted out. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, next, we're going to take a look at either Kubuntu or KDE Neon. I haven't decided yet. I'm kind of leaning towards Neon, but we'll take a look at one of those and see what kind of a KDE um, environment they provide when you first install them and how it differs and, and kind of compare and see what you're getting with each of them. All right. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.